This presentation provides information you may need for installing vCenter Server 5.1 according to best practices, and it is based on Knowledge Base Article 202-1202. This is not a comprehensive guide. For more information, see the vSphere 5.1 documentation. The documentation contains definitive information. If there is a discrepancy between the documentation and this presentation, assume that the documentation is correct. Because each environment is different, many installation decisions require knowledge and understanding beyond the scope of this presentation. For more detailed information about your installation, see the vSphere Installation and Setup Guide. Review the vSphere 5.1 release notes for known issues or special installation notes. The install process has changed from vCenter Server 5.0. vSphere 5.1 introduces the vCenter Single Sign-On Service as part of the vCenter Server Management Infrastructure. This change affects vCenter Server installation, upgrading, and operation. For small vSphere deployments, vCenter Server 5.1 provides a vCenter Server Simple Install option that installs vCenter Single Sign-On, Inventory Service, and vCenter Server on the same host or virtual machine. Alternatively, to customize the location and setup of each component, you can install the components separately by selecting the individual installation options in this order. vCenter Single Sign-On Inventory Service, and vCenter Server. Each component can be installed in a different host or virtual machine. For the first installation of vCenter Server with vCenter Single Sign-On, you must install Single Sign-On Server, Inventory Service, and vCenter Server in the vSphere environment. In subsequent installations of vCenter Server in your environment, you do not need to install additional Single Sign-On Servers. One single sign-on server can serve your entire vSphere environment. After you install vCenter Single Sign-On once, you can connect all new vCenter server instances to the same authentication server. However, you must install an inventory service instance for each vCenter server instance. The vSphere 5.1 Single Sign-On feature simplifies the login process for the cloud infrastructure suite. You can log into the management infrastructure a single time through the vSphere web client or the API. You will be able to perform operations across all components of the cloud infrastructure suite without having to log into the components separately. Single sign-on operates across all cloud infrastructure suite components that support this feature. You can install vCenter single sign-on, inventory service, and vCenter Server on the same host machine, or on different machines. The vCenter Server system is a physical or virtual machine with access to a supported database. The vCenter Server system must meet specific requirements, and the vCenter Server machines must meet the hardware requirements. Note, installing vCenter Server on a network drive or USB flash drive is not supported. For the hardware requirements of your database, see your database documentation. The database requirements are in addition to the vCenter server requirements if the database and vCenter server run on the same machine. The table below outlines the recommended hardware configurations for a medium deployment of up to 50 hosts and 500 powered on virtual machines. The next table outlines the recommended hardware configurations for a large deployment of up to 300 hosts and 3,000 powered on virtual machines. This last table outlines the recommended hardware configurations for an extra large deployment of up to 1,000 hosts and 10,000 powered on virtual machines.
The following browsers are supported for version 5.1 of the vSphere web client. The vSphere web client requires Adobe Flash Player version 10.1.0 or later to be installed with the appropriate plugin for your browser. Make sure that your operating system supports vCenter Server. vCenter Server requires a 64-bit operating system and the 64-bit system DSN is required for the vCenter Server to connect to its database. For a list of supported operating systems, see the VMware Compatibility Guide. vCenter Server requires the Microsoft.NET 3.5 SP1 framework. If it is not installed on your system, the vCenter Server installer installs it. The .NET 3.5 SP1 installation might require internet connectivity to download more files. If you plan to use the Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 Express database that is bundled with vCenter Server, Microsoft Windows Installer MSI version 4.5 is required on your system. You can download MSI 4.5 from the Microsoft website. You can also install it directly from the vCenter Server autorun.exe installer. Each vCenter Server instance must have its own database. vCenter Server instances cannot share the same database schema. Multiple vCenter Server databases can reside on the same database server, or they can be separated across multiple databases servers. You do not need to install a new database server for the vCenter Server installation to work. During the vCenter Server installation, you can point the vCenter Server system to any existing supported database. Ensure that your vCenter Server database meets the database requirements. You need to create a vCenter Single Sign-On database, unless you plan to install the bundled database. If you are using an existing database, to ensure that tablespace is created for the database, run the following script that is located at vCenter Server Installation Directory backslash single sign-on backslash dbscripts backslash SSO server backslash schema backslash your existing database. The IBM DB2 database is only supported for vCenter Server. There is no support for Update Manager or any plugin that requires a database. vCenter Server databases require a UTF code set if you have a vCenter Server database that you want to preserve, do not perform a fresh installation of vCenter Server. See the vSphere Upgrade Guide for more information. Before you install vCenter Single Sign-On, install the vSphere Web Client or deploy the vCenter Server appliance. Make sure all machines on the vSphere network have their clocks synchronized. If the clocks on the vCenter Server network machines are not synchronized, SSL certificates, which are time-sensitive, might not be recognized as valid in communications between network machines. Unsynchronized clocks can result in authentication problems which can cause the vSphere web client installation to fail or prevent the vCenter server appliance VPXD service from starting. The machine on which you install or upgrade the vCenter server must have a computer name that is 15 characters or fewer. If your database is located on the same machine on which vCenter Server will be installed, and you have recently changed the name of this machine to comply with the name length requirement, make sure the vCenter Server DSN is configured to communicate with the new name of the machine. Changing the vCenter Server computer name can impact database communication if the database server is on the same computer with vCenter Server. The name change has no effect on communication with remote databases. You can skip this procedure if the database is remote. Make sure the database server is running, and make sure that the vCenter server computer name is updated in the domain name service. To test this connection, ping the computer name. For example, if the computer name is host-1.company.com, Run the following command in Windows Command Prompt. If you can ping the computer name, the name is updated in DNS. Before installing vCenter Server, 
Review the prerequisites for installing vCenter Single Sign-On Inventory Service and vCenter Server in the vSphere Installation and Setup Guide. vCenter Server 5.1 requires vCenter Single Sign-On and Inventory Service. You must install these components in this order. vCenter Single Sign-On, Inventory Service, and then vCenter Server. Review the release notes for known issues or special installation notes. Consider whether the vCenter server instance will be standalone or in linked mode group. Gather the information that the vCenter server installation wizard requires. Verify that you have the installation DVD or download the vCenter server installer. Verify that your system meets the hardware requirements for vCenter Server, vCenter Single Sign-On, vSphere Client, and vSphere Web Client, as well as vCenter Server software requirements, and that the required ports are open. Verify that the fully qualified domain name of the system where you will install vCenter Server is resolvable. Verify that the DNS reverse lookup returns a fully qualified domain name when queried with the IP address of the vCenter Server. Verify that no network address translation exists between the vCenter server system and the hosts that it will manage. If the system that you use for your vCenter server installation belongs to a work group rather than a domain, not all functionality is available to vCenter server. If assigned to a work group, the vCenter server system is not able to discover all domains and systems available on the network when using some features. To determine whether the system belongs to a work group or a domain, right-click My Computer, click Properties, go to the Computer Name tab. The Computer Name tab displays either a work group label or a domain label. During the installation, verify that the connection between the machine and the domain controller is working. Before the vCenter server installation, verify that the vCenter single sign-on and RSA SSPI services have started. Make sure the system on which you are installing vCenter server is not an Active Directory domain controller.